Okay, let's take a few minutes to talk about something called activity-based costing and why a company might use something like this. So if you remember back from uh, job order costing, we talked a lot about overhead costs. So we have three primary components to our total manufacturing costs. Those are direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Well, the reason we have overhead is because we have items that are not easily and conveniently traceable to specific cost objects or specific products. Since that is the case, we have to come up with a way to try to allocate those costs to our products so we can figure out exactly how much a product really costs so we know how much to charge our customers. It also helps us realize that these costs that we have that we aren't easily attachable to a specific item or specific product, there is a cost associated with those and they aren't free. So it should help us plan for more efficient cost effective operations. So as we'll see in the following sections, companies often refine their cost allocation systems to minimize the amount of cost distortion caused by simpler cost allocation systems. By refining their cost systems, companies can more equitably assign indirect costs, such as manufacturing overhead, to their individual jobs, products, or services. So basically we're asking why refine? Simple systems don't do a very good job of matching the cost of overhead resources with the products. In simple systems resulting in overcosting or undercosting of jobs, we call that cost distortion. So we're assigning too much or too little cost to a specific product. That's what we call cost distortion. So next we ask who can refine then? Manufacturing often operations can better allocate overhead to reduce cost distortion. And service companies and governmental agencies can also benefit from refined cost allocation systems. We'll be describing how refined cost allocation systems can be used to better allocate manufacturing overhead, meaning indirect manufacturing costs to specific products and to reduce cost distortion. Keep in mind that the same principles apply to allocating any indirect cost to any cost object. Even merchandising and service companies as well and governmental agencies can use these refined cost allocation systems to provide their managers with better cost information. So we're going to be looking at something called activity-based costing. Now activity-based costing you can see up here on the graph. It uses more cost pools than traditional costing systems that often use a single plant-wide rate or just one overhead pool per department. So ABC cost pools are going to be created to correspond to the activities performed in an organization that cause the consumption of overhead resources. So the total number of ABC cost pools will definitely exceed one as in the plant ride approach and it's likely to exceed the number of departments within a company as in the departmental approach since more than one activity is often performed within each department. So let's do a quick review of what we've learned so far. So the traditional allocation method that we've used so far um, allocates indirect costs to a cost object based on some sort of consumption, whether typically direct labor hours or machine hours. So you take the total manufacturing overhead cost and we divide it by the estimated amount of the allocation base. So in this example, if we had a million dollars of estimated manufacturing overhead, and our employees work 62,500 direct labor hours, that would be $16 per direct labor hour that we would allocate. So using that single plant-wide overhead rate means we will allocate manufacturing overhead costs using that one predetermined manufacturing overhead rate for all operations. It doesn't matter whether we're producing treadmills, uh, ellipticals, cross trainers, uh, stair climbers, all are gonna be allocated the same manufacturing overhead using the single rate. So it wouldn't matter whether the job was worked in one department or multiple departments during the process. The same rate is going to be used throughout the plant and therefore all products would receive the same allocated amount. Now under departmental overhead rates we would use those to allocate manufacturing overhead to jobs or products based on the extent to which each product uses different manufacturing departments. So remember that the four basic steps that are used to allocate manufacturing overhead using departmental rates. 
The only real difference is that we will be calculating separate rates for each department. So we still have to estimate the total manufacturing costs that will be incurred in this case in each department in the coming year. This, these are known as our departmental overhead cost pools. And then the company selects an allocation base for each department and estimates the total amount that will be used during the year. Then they calculate the departmental overhead rate using the information we just calculated. And then the company allocates some manufacturing overhead from each department to the individual jobs in those departments. So this is a type of refined cost system. The products are going to be allocated cost appropriate to the product resulting in less cost distortion. Okay, so some of the criticisms of traditional overhead allocation. If you think about it, in recent years, manufacturers and service providers have experienced tremendous change. Advances in computerized systems, technological innovation, global competition, and automation have changed the manufacturing environment drastically. As a result, the amount of direct labor used in many industries has greatly decreased, and total overhead costs resulting from depreciation on expensive equipment, machinery, utilities, repairs, and maintenance have significantly increased. So when there is not a correlation between direct labor and overhead, it's inappropriate to use a plant-wide predetermined overhead rate based on direct labor. Companies that use overhead rates based on direct labor when this correlation does not experience significant um, does not exist experience significant product cost distortions. So to help avoid such distortions, many companies are now using machine hours as the basis upon which to allocate overhead in an automated manufacturing environment. But even machine hours may not suffice as the only plant-wide basis for allocating overhead. If the manufacturing process is complex, then multiple allocation bases can result in more accurate product cost computations and um, then companies should consider an overhead cost allocation method that uses multiple bases such as activity-based costing. So if, if departments incur different amounts and types of manufacturing overhead, or if different jobs or products use department resources to a different extent, then the company should consider fine-tuning its cost allocation system by establishing separate manufacturing overhead rates, which are known as departmental overhead rates for each department. These rates are then used to allocate manufacturing overhead to jobs or products based on the extent to which each product uses different manufacturing departments. So here's an example out of the textbook that illustrates the use of departmental overhead rates. So in this particular example, we've refined the plant-wide method of allocation, breaking it down into departments. We've got a machining department and an assembly department. Now the computation is very similar to what we did with the uh, single plant-wide overhead rate. Again, we want to look at the overhead costs incurred in each department. And then we will divide that by the departmental allocation base. In this case, they're using still direct labor hours and the hours that will be incurred in each department. That gives us a departmental overhead rate. Then we can multiply that departmental overhead rate times the actual use of the product in that specific department. So in this case, if we're producing ellipticals and it takes one hour in the machining department, multiply, or one direct labor hour, we will multiply that times the 32 departmental overhead rate and do the same thing for the assembly department. Nine hours in assembly times $12 per direct labor hour. Add those two together and we'll get manufacturing overhead assigned for one elliptical of $140. Now here we can continue that example and we can allocate to treadmills. So previously we were allocating to ellipticals, now we'll go ahead and allocate to treadmills. We can use the same departmental overhead rates and then again how many hours is it taking direct labor in machining to produce one treadmill? It looks like four and six hours in the assembly department. Do the math and add those together. So it'd be $200 of overhead allocated to the treadmill. Now, if we were using the single plant-wide overhead rate, we would have allocated the same amount, $160, to um, the elliptical and the treadmill because they were both taking 10 direct 
labor hours to complete. Um, under the departmental overhead allocation, you can see that the elliptical is charged less cost than the um, treadmill is at $200. So we would have overcosted the elliptical by 20 and undercosted the treadmill by 20. Okay, so that should give you a brief introduction or preview into activity-based costing and we'll continue on in the next um, video. Thank you.